Uh, well, let's kick this building committee meeting off. Let's do a roll call, please. Oh, come on. I mean, oh, come on. It's so important. It's so immediate. Like, it's like roll call. It's like responsiveness. It makes us look unprofessional. Everyone's laughing. I can see them on YouTube or whatever this is broadcast on. Okay. Yeah, everyone, they're laughing at us on everything. Now. Please note that I actually delayed a couple minutes myself to get my computer updated, so. That's my iPad just zips right up. Okay, Commissioner Peterson. I am here. And I'm sorry, what was your name? Is here for Judge Bailey? Ste uh, Stephanie Steele. Okay, for Judge Bailey today, uh, Ms. Madriga. Here. Commissioner Capitan. Here. Sheriff Johnner. Here. Mr. Wilson. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you, everyone. With that, I'm looking for a motion to approve prior meeting minutes. If you've got a chance to review them, please. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. All right. Uh, on to the meat of our agenda. Let's start with item 2A, Mr. Wilson. Uh, the Robert Johnson building across the street. Well, across the street, across the street. Mr. Chair, thank you. And, and I'm just going to go down the list of the memo that's at the back of this pap, uh, packet. And, and really, the the, the intent on uh, all but one of these items is just to provide an update on uh, on where these projects are uh, and uh, then really look for, at the conclusion of the meeting, look for your uh, input, feedback on what you would like uh, with the frequency of meetings moving forward because we've got a number of projects uh, that we'll discuss here in the next uh, um, hour. Uh, that are going to see some some progress over the coming months. Uh, we have one exception to that. One bit of action we'll we'll ask the uh, committee to uh, to consider, but we'll we'll get to that uh, towards the end of the agenda. Uh, back to the RDJ building update. Commissioner Peterson referenced um, this is the building to the west of the parking lot in front of the annex. Uh, off and on conversations about potentially purchasing that building from the uh, Fargo Parks District have gone in some fits and starts uh, pretty much since I have uh, been with the county. Um, latest round of conversations uh, included a conversation a couple of weeks ago, myself, Commissioner Peterson, um, uh, Ms. Madriga, uh, I'm not sure who else was, was there. Really, we, uh, in, in broad concept terms, um, there, there's a couple of, of conceptual ideas of what the county could do with that site, uh, of after-hours services, kiosks in, a, in an area, different way of, of service delivery in a much more specific and, and concrete um, uh, sense and, and utilization. Um, uh, Ms. Madriga and some of her staff have uh, worked with, with an architect and are looking at uh, a portion of the building of really where they could do use it for election uh, training and, and storage uh, as an alternative to a uh, non-air conditioned uh, metal building that we rent uh, out on uh, just off of Main Avenue that uh, is, I, I don't think I'm speaking out of turn to say undersized and uh, has some, some challenging working conditions. So the, uh, the, the now element of this, uh, this discussion is that following that meeting a couple of weeks ago, um, Parks uh, staff was going to go back to their facilities committee, share the uh, contents of that meeting, and then come back to us in some form. And really, I, I would say the crux of where this conversation is right now is a price. Uh, I, I think on the, the county side, uh, and I'm looking square at uh, Commissioner Peterson here. I think we're pretty clear on a value here of about $750,000. Uh, that is uh, pretty much in line with what Parks District has into that building in terms of acquisition costs and update and maintenance costs over the course of the, the time they have owned it. Um, 
the, I, I think the, uh, some members of that organization have a different perspective. They've had a number of uh, appraisals on the property in the last couple of years. Their most recent one came back at some point one in the range of 1.2. Uh, and, and so really, it, 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 it's going to quickly, I think, come down to a discussion of what uh, uh, brass tax, what is the building worth? We, we have a need for it. Um, uh, and where is that value compared to uh, monetary value we attach to it versus what the Parks District uh, attaches to it? Um, and it, it's really will be that simple and I think we I think that um, discussion moves forward substantially when we get to engage again with uh, representatives of the parks district after their uh, facilities committee has met Commissioner Peterson yeah I think what Robert said is spot on it's a matter of price uh, I, I contend we are we have to do something with the elections building I don't mean that more than we have to find another location for it ideally uh, it would be adjacent to our property, so that makes a lot of sense. It's made a lot of sense in the past, too. Uh, and I, as Mr. Wilson summarized perfectly, it's it's a matter of price. So we'll sit down with them here in the coming weeks and try to figure out where they're going to be. They've not really talked to their leadership. I think what they've done is their admin team has talked quite a bit about things. Uh, but beyond the admin team, that the uh, park board commissioners, I don't think, are engaged at all. Uh, I'd be shocked if they were. Uh, so I think them informing the people that are sort of steering the ship, if you will, it will be important. And I think getting a couple of us in the room with a couple of them is equally as important. And I think if it comes down to the response of, well, we're just going to go put it on the open market and get a million bucks for this thing. Okay, we'll do that then. Uh, and I think they're going to be shocked at how much that building is not worth. I, I really do because, <clears throat> again, it's not worth the zero dollars. It's not worth half a million. I think the 750 is sort of that compromise, make them whole, and we, we, we move on, they move on, and we then have to add some, some modifications to some degree to make the facility work a little better for our elections team. But uh, what that amount is, I think, is, remains to be seen regardless. I do think, though, that, as Mr. Wilson said again, it's that meeting, and then we'll go from there. I, one thing I probably should have pointed out at the uh, at the outset is this this sheet. Everybody has a, a copy of, of this sheet. Um, the projects that we're going to run through these are not nebulous concepts uh, without some uh, dollars attached to them. Uh, the top of this form, the building fl fund cash flow. Uh, these are for 2023. These are um, uh, uh, allocated dollars that the commission approved as part of the, uh, part of the 2023 budget. Um, the 2024 uh, amounts uh, were, were discussed, and I, I think I would say there was um, an understanding that, that that was most likely the, the full need, but we, we obviously budget on a year-to-year -year basis, so the um, the uh, the 2020 beyond 2023, it is not in a budget, but the the 2023 amounts are budgeted amounts within the the county's building fund. Um, down on the bottom, uh, those are balances and a, a schedule of um, uh, expenses anticipated with a, a couple of our uh, outstanding projects that we are going to talk about as we move through the meeting. So. Top of the uh, the fund the sheet is building fund. Bottom of the fund the sheet is uh, ARPA and CARES funds. With that, any questions on RDJ? If not, we'll progress through our list. All right, let's keep pushing. Okay. Highway department. Highway department. Um, this is one that that I would say, and and Tom may have better is, information than than I do. General reminder, we do have some sketches in the back of our packet. If you've not had a chance to review them, you should have rough concepts of what we're talking about, Mr. Wilkins. Sorry. Yeah. Um, correct. The bottom two slides uh, relate back to highway department. And, um, and the previous, again, just to give you a sense of scope and scale. Um, but I, Tom, I may look to Tom because uh, I... The 
the dollar amount uh, was for the, the highway department addition remodel was uh, uh, came out of the uh, architect's estimate, and I believe Terry Stroh with TL, TL Stroh was working very closely with uh, Jason and, and highway staff, and, and so my my understanding is that project um, is going to publish to bidders on February eighth. Bids due March second, uh, so that that one is uh, well well on the way. And and Tom, any updates that you would pro provide for us? The only other update I guess I could think of was uh, on uh, the fifteenth. Uh, we're going to have a walk through. For right. contractors to come and take a look at the facility and get their thoughts and assemble their numbers. So that's one to three on the on the fifteenth of February. So we'll see what happens uh, with our, our, our how our bids come in on on March second. You know the one commentary on sort of the state of the world and supply chains of where they are now compared to mm -hmm. a few years ago, not. Too many months after I started, there were some uh, um, much more high-level conversations of a, a similar project out at the uh, the highway department. It was shelved at that point, and at that point, the uh, estimated cost on that project was about 1.8 million. So it, it's uh, uh, you know thing net not for anything that anybody lacked doing, uh, but it, it's. Uh, it's unfortunate, and it's uh, it's rather telling of what the last uh, couple of years have, have been like to to see that we've got an estimate of just under three million dollars. Um, obviously, that number's not locked in yet. We'll see what bids come back at in uh, uh, in a little more than a month. But it's uh, it makes you gulp, no, no doubt about that. Um, moving on. Um, any, any questions on the highway, <coughs> highway department activities? All right, keep pushing, sir. Okay. Annex. Uh, annex building. Uh, again, this one has uh, a budgeted amount, $400,000 for, uh, for 2023. The, the conversation with uh, Gail uh, was really, what, what can we do to make this a better, better work environment? Uh, after uh, they have they have as many challenges as I would say any other uh, uh, department office uh, part of the county, and uh, it it's not the the whole answer, but part of that is uh, the the work environment you provide, and and after um, uh, probably not a stretch to say a couple of decades of. Um, we need three more offices. Um, Gene, what can you do in the next six weeks? Um, that you know that that has. Um, it's in the parking lot. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, the, <laughs> there there was an ability to at least unify a feel or or or, or make uh, improve it to to some measure. Uh, so we, knowing that the full cost to to do what we'd like to do uh, there is is substantially more than that. Um, Gene and Gail and Terry Stroh and I uh, sat down on this one again a couple of weeks ago, uh, identified really first year priorities of lighting and painting and then uh, securing uh, the front door, which right now has a vestibule area that is unsecured with the interior doors into the building uh, being, being secured. Uh, and so we're Looking to with that uh, that 2023 allocation, uh, do a lighting project, a painting project, um, uh, secure those those doors, and then uh, if there are some funds available there, they've also uh, done a, a brand update and update some signage on it. So that that is a uh, um, probably the newest developments, if you will, on any of these projects in the last couple of weeks. So, Mr. Wilson, we're talking about again scope and scale. Uh, yeah. You mentioned multi-year improvements. Yes. Uh, do you have any sketches of what sort of you and Gail and our friends at Stro have scribbled up? Well, in my hand, in my hand, in, in my hand right now, no. Uh, we coming off of the meeting uh, 
uh, I believe it was last week with, with Terry, where we, we really were still trying to wrap our arms around with what, what are we doing at what timeline? Uh, because we, we had talked about, you know, either, either it was stair, you know, do we, do we do stairwells? Do we do, you know, all of the break room areas that we're looking at? And, and really it, it came down to Gail's comment of what, what would be most impactful to the greatest number uh, as quickly as possible. Um, that was where the, the painting and the lighting came in. So Terry has developed the, the plans for these, but it was he was waiting for our feedback of how we wanted to order these and, and bring the plan forward. So he, what, what he told us at that point is he has these ready to go, but it was basically figure out which one. So now that we have that, uh, that is... We, we will get that in short order. So here's where I'm going with this. Obviously, our, our friends in Bismarck have allocated resources to almost endless degrees to our friends out west, uh, anywhere non-CAS, if you will. Uh, that's not fair. But let me just say at the west. Um, we are anticipating, hopefully, getting more team members here, uh, whether they're budgeted or reallocated or repurposed, pick a phrase or term, uh, I'm not sure that we have the ability to grow. That's part of your responsibility to make sure that we do. Uh, if we do grow by five or ten people, A, do we have the space? B, where are you going to put them? And B, dash one, how are you going to pay for it? We have a lot of people in Bismarck right now that need to hear, hey, we're going to be spending $2.75 million remodeling your space much like our friends in courts, right? We talk about our friends in courts. That's a state function. It's not what we do. It's thrust upon us by the state. We'll, we'll do what we need to do, make sure they're taken care of. But it's an expense of the state. We'll be talking about a grant here later that, in, that relates to that. I would like to have, even if it's a square foot number, to be able to ping our friends for a crossover and say, hey, this is the ramifications of doing what we do. Uh, we talk about property taxes, we talk about property taxes, property taxes, and then also we're going to put $3 million, roughly six mills, into your building, knowing full well you've built jails and sewer systems and treatment plants and schools and everything else. And again, they should have. I'm heard a lot of that made a world of sense. That's what I'm going for. If I could get a number even close, not to be kept, you know, this is doctrine and shall be followed to perpetuity. It's hey, we think we're going to spend $3 million bucks in this building in the next three years. Help out. Square footage per floor. Something. If Terry has... Which I think we have. <coughs> if, yeah, he's, if he's got I, scribbles, he can do it. It's called a polyline, and sure. those polylines can contribute push-out information. Estimate, estimated cost of total project. Bingo. Bingo. Okay. Okay. Um, because then I, ha I have that at the tip of my tongue, so I'm sitting in Bismarck. I can say, you guys think this is a big deal. No, I'll tell you what the big deal is. $3 million into your box in the next three years. That's a big deal to account for another state program, which again is perfectly fine, but we have, we have counties that have total budgets of less than a million dollars, right? That's their general fund, that's all their staff, that's everything. And my gut's telling me this is gonna be <coughs> way more than, I haven't seen the sketches, not heard any of your discussions, but I don't think $400,000 is gonna do it. I think $800,000 is gonna do it. Plus if we start adding people, like as we probably should, and I think we take over whether it's juvenile or whatever, there's a bigger number here that our friends in Bismarck need to hear. I, I, we, will, we will get that number for you. I, I, don't, I don't think at this point uh, in, in the near future, uh, capacity is the, uh, is the issue between their uh, recruitment and retention issues and, and some of the, the uh, uh, compensation Things that they're working through right now, but I, you know, long term understand when, and we can we can get the best available information to you. The better we can inform our team from CAST, the better informed they will be, and, and hopefully the more communicative they will be with their peers. So yes, in this case, less is not more. More is more. Got it. Thank you. Uh, questions about our annex building? And while we do the samba, <laughs> questions with our. Beers on me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Donuts. Uh, any questions? 
All right, let's keep pushing, Jail. Um, jail Housing Unit Edition. Uh, this is by uh, by by any uh, uh, stretch of the uh, imagination or or way to quantify. This is the biggie. Um, this is we are uh, well into the process with Klein McCarthy Architects to design uh, an additional housing unit um, based off of the the needs analysis and the scoping uh, study that was completed last summer and led to the current work. Uh, project cost estimates are between $36 $40 million on that. Uh, and we are uh, moving toward, towards uh, getting uh, bid packages ready to go for the, for the spring, time it to be most, to um, uh, hopefully get most optimal uh, bidding uh, from contractors. And um, uh, and then we'll we'll see where costs ultimately end up. I uh, would draw your attention again on this sheet to the uh, the bottom of the page because uh, of, of bulk of that cost uh, we anticipate uh, funding with uh, uh, with ARPA and CARES funds. Uh, we've got about thirty four million left. Uh, there, there's a good chance that doesn't cover the full amount, but it will cover. The, uh, the majority of it. Um, there is a, um, uh, Mr. Peterson, you would, uh, uh, would know this term better than the rest of us, but a page turn meeting uh, scheduled for the, uh, uh, the 15th uh, of February, really, where uh, the, the architect comes back with the, I think they're uh, close to final draft of, of the plans of this is what we've got laid out for you, pick it apart. Um, you know, last revisions before we go to uh, go to final draft, um, and, and so this is, um, and I I I think uh, our, our fine sheriff here could uh, could talk for as long as we would give him about the need uh, to get this uh, this unit up and up and running, and this is uh, this is us working as quickly as we can to to that end. Sheriff. Yes, thank you for uh, allowing me a few minutes here. Yeah, most definitely nothing's changed on our end. We've been running around uh, 220, or excuse me, 320. You're like 220, wait a minute, we don't need it. 320, um, as far as, or even an up to 3, 328 a few times over the last uh, couple weeks. So we're, we're bursting at the seams. Um, that's with having people at other jurisdictions, average about 15 to 20, around, 15 on community supervision. So we're well over capacity if all those people had to come back tomorrow. We've been running at or operating at that for several months still, occasionally having to decline some people coming in. So nothing's changed in our, on our, uh, from our perspective at all. One question I have, Mr. Wilson, is when is this thing gonna go out for bid? We talked about February 1st of March. Are they still on that 1st of March? Uh, everything I'm hearing from their uh, uh, their rep is that yes, this is we're we're still uh, in the, the the same time frame that we've talked about since uh, since we signed on with them for for the design um, plans back in the summer. That it I don't I don't have a specific date for you, but it is uh, February March slash time frame. Uh, so I, I think. I would expect coming out of this message, this meeting on the fifteenth, because that is, uh, Gene, that's basically a full day meeting. So mm -hmm. I, I, I expect that we will have a, uh, a hard date coming out of that that meeting. Yeah, I guess my pressure on them will be, obviously they're making a bunch of money doing this, which is fine. Uh, if the thing, if the thing slips to April, that defeated the purpose of paying a bunch of money, right? We, I expected timeliness. And when you get this heave of cash, timeliness is not debatable. And work your guys overtime. This thing is out the first week in March, period. Can't do it. Figure it out. I believe in you. Put on your I can do it hat, as one of my builders once told me. Put on your I can do it hat and knock this thing out. Uh, if this thing falls to the end of March, not acceptable at all. And, and nothing I have heard uh, tells me that timeline is slipping. Okay. I believe in you. And, that, and, and I think that... You know that speaks to 
one of the other wrap-up con conversations we're going to have at this meeting uh, at this meeting is what what is the uh, the the cadence or the time uh, the timeline uh, that this group this committee wants to have these meetings moving forward to uh, you know to receive timely updates we're going to obviously we've got a couple of projects that are are going to be rather dynamic and and changing on a week to week basis so it, the last couple of years this this committee has not met all that frequently moving forward you may want to have monthly meetings uh, be, because we're going to have a, a, a pretty significant ramp up in in project activity so that to to be able to answer questions exactly like that 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 would play into that that discussion any questions about our jail no just i mean for me timeliness is, is obviously very good because i'm taking regular questions i mean certainly we've had a number of conversations with the other area law enforcement leaders and they understand the, the situation that we're in um but it's it's been frustrating for a number of on a different levels whether it's at that you know the bottom law enforcement level and that kind of trickling up to the agencies and then reaching out to me from time to time and certainly everyone understands i mean we're, we're full it is what it is we're trying to do the best that we can and get people in and uh, when we can and prioritize who's coming in and those types of things but yeah i mean the timeliness is good i i, I think there's an understanding that uh, sheriff you and your staff staff are, are kind of uh tap dancing on a pinhead there uh, between pressures from other law enforcement agencies. You've got, uh, you know, it, it's ultimately the decision of the courts and, you know, in, in many cases of who's in, who's out, uh, out at what particular time. You've got uh, constituent uh, in, uh, input and as well as commission and your, uh, your fellow law enforcement agency heads around the community. So you know, certainly understand that, uh, uh, there, there's a lot of conversations coming your way there. Are you saying that the bid letting for the uh, jail annex is going to be at the end of this month or in March? Or that that is the time frame, I believe. Yes, and I think we're going to get we're going to get a a finalized date uh, coming out of this meeting on the fifteenth. So Gene just showed me an, uh, an email, which I think I was copied on to. Uh, said you know. Bid documents complete and out for bid in March. Well, that doesn't mean March 1st. That means March something. Yeah. And the intent of this whole thing was to be actually, I recall February, to be honest with you. But uh, if we're out in the first week in March, I think that's probably reasonable. If we're out at the end of March, and that's not acceptable. No. Again, when we're paying people this much money, work your guys overtime. Figure it out. Don't care. Stop everything else. Don't care. Knock it out. I believe we can. There, there's their email said 95 percent complete uh at the end of february which the devil's always in the details it's that last sw anyone in this room and i'm being sincere can put together a 95 percent document to build a jail to build a courthouse to build and everything it's that last five percent that's the bear that's where people get in trouble get sued and people sneak out oh i forgot to put a door on that cell shoot it, it's that last five percent that uh so, all right. Peters, may I ask a question? Yes, sir. Um, do you believe there's going to be any problems finding contractors to bid with everybody kind of busy right now? So that's why this dummy wanted to have this thing done in February. You want to be the first one out of the box because checks, well, projects like this with checks that don't bounce are very compelling to bidders. And especially when you get to this scale where you'll draw people from Minneapolis for a project like this. Uh, so that's why I'm so scared of this thing being delayed till some other time. Uh, that is the question that whether you're building an outhouse or you're building a courthouse or you're building a million two square foot Amazon project, I, I have no idea. What I'm hearing, so I, my background's architecture on a construction company. Uh, what I'm hearing is people either have way too much or nothing. And it doesn't seem like there's anybody that's in that sweet spot of, boy, you know, I've got just enough work to keep me going. Uh, in my case, we could hire 20 people tomorrow. If there were 20 people to hire, we'd hire them. We have work. Uh, 
some of my peers aren't that lucky or blessed, pick your word, or <laughs> confounded with struggles. Uh, but I have no idea. I, I wish I could say, yep, I guarantee 15 bidders. I, I, I'd be shocked if we have less than three, but I have no idea. And do you, do you have to pick, so if it's the companies that don't have work that you wouldn't want to use, you would have, are you stuck with those? So, companies that they're the lowest bidder? The way the docs are always specified, it's lowest and best. Okay. Uh, that allows you some deviation. I think typically, looking at my lawyer team here, uh, <laughs> when you deviate you know, 10, 15%, that's when contractors threaten to litigate because the best portion uh, is somewhat skeptical. Because you've, you've literally got to have a contractor that has not performed uh, to the point where they're avoiding. <laughs> I know we don't have blacklists. I think we just, I think Stengem just started a blacklist. Uh, but that's the kind of category you have to be in. You have to be proven incompetent or illegal to operate in the state to deviate much. But like, let's pretend we have, I always use my good friends uh, that maintain our buildings. They've got certain locks, like schlag, like door locks, or HVAC systems that are typical throughout the campus. You'll have another bidder come in and they'll have like, instead of train, they'll have like Bob's HVAC. Hi, I'm Bob. I have an air conditioning company. It's going to be awesome. Well, Bob, you're super. Yep, you're half the price, but we're really comfortable with train. Integration of our two systems isn't possible. So I'm going to go with lowest and best. In a jail, it's going to kind of be what it's going to be. So long drawn out answer to your question of, uh, <laughs> uh, any other questions on our jail? Mr. Wilson. Um, law enforcement storage building. Um, this is a, another one that was in the building fund for 500000 for 2023. Uh, again, this is, uh, I think everyone would, would agree, fairly basic building up at the LEC, basically to clear out um, um, uh, the uh, equipment that is uh, stored over in the in the highway building, taking about a third of that uh, that building at this point. So the uh, RFP, um, originally, we had gone out, got a quote from uh, uh, wow. uh, a, a vendor here in town, and it uh, ended up being above procurement uh, limits, so we need to go out for bid. We've got that RFP just getting uh, um, uh, reviewed and, and verified. We'll get that out, uh, get that published here um, very quickly. And then that, uh, I think this one, um, in terms of buildings to be built, is a fairly straightforward design and, uh, uh, and construct. Uh, so that will we'll be, uh, we'll be moving fairly quickly. We're still talking about siting at the LEC, right? Mm -hmm. Are we going to leave our existing windbreak? Yes. OK. I think we'll come off with the sign. Oh. Okay. Or maybe. Okay. Uh, any question? This is a pretty simple building. It's literally a, a tin box with some doors on it. Uh, I think. I, I'm not. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not convinced the half a million dollars is going to do it. By the time you're done fiddling around with everything, uh, but for a placeholder in the budget, I think that might be a good starting point. This is going to come with footing and foundations, and if we're going to plumb it, there's an issue there. You've got to get sewer to it. That sewer line might cost you 50 grand. So, yeah. just saying. I don't know that stuff, but <clears throat> Gene was talking about, I'm sure there's a lot more to than just tapping into the other one. Right. There's a floor drain there. So. Right. Yeah. Well, Mr. Wilson, I believe in you, but I think there's a dollar figure there bigger than half a million my main point. So regardless of that, uh, as a placeholder, I, I do think we need to put an RFP out to see what it costs. Scribble. Uh, yeah, like these split. Any questions regarding this one? This, this building does have HVAC, water, sewer. We just heating. Yep. Heating only, no air conditioning. I, I anticipate unit heaters in the corner. Yeah. Done. Okay. Okay. Patio, I mean, I heat the bathroom. I'm being serious. I mean, it's just, I mean, we got to have warm, 
warm yeah, storage mo for the most part. I mean, I, one thing I do want to make sure that we do have, <clears throat> excuse me, wash, if we can have a wash bay in there, that way we keep our stuff clean. And, I mean, it doesn't have to be a separate thing to be where people are parking, but that wash bay is going to cost you 100K. Go to down. Just stop the drain in there? God, yep. But you will know because you'll have to contain the moisture. Once you have all that moisture floating around, especially in the metal building, it tends to rust it oh. along the base as well. I would say, uh, yeah, if that's, if that's a thing that you need, that's a big ticket. Never mind uh, the water line and everything else. So, but if, if that's on the wish list, I would, I would segregate. We can talk about this later. I would segregate that portion. You can figure out if you want to find 150 grand, 100 and whatever thousand dollars it's going to be for a wash bay. I think, Sheriff, I think I emailed you a draft of the RFP yeah. uh, last week. So mm -hmm. if that's, you know, looking for the feedback to get that in. I, was, I didn't think it would be that much to do that. I thought it would weigh out. Obviously, I'm not an architect, yeah. but in the bid documents, it's only for the building at a time. We want to have it for the Oh. And humidity and all that you gonna do that separate? Yeah. Let's talk about that. Okay. I'm not sure we can segregate like that. We'll talk. Okay. Any further questions on this one? We have 20 minutes plus or minus left. Yeah. Um, okay. Last. Let's go to uh, the end, which is our courthouse, which is inclusive of our grant. Yeah. Uh, two uh, projects we want to talk about in the courthouse. Um, we did have in the 2022 budget um, replacing uh, windows in the old portion of the, uh, uh, the courthouse building um, and just supply chain issues and, and uh, products not showing up when, when expected. We weren't able to complete that uh, in 2022. That's going to be a carryover and uh, uh, vendors reached out to you and they either have them on site or they, they will be shipped and ready to go when, when things warm up and ready to, and ready to uh, uh, work in the spring. So that one, that is just basically an update. It's gonna, uh, gonna happen and be ready to um, you know, accommodate a, a little bit of uh, workarounds as, as they're up on uh, lifts and you know, replacing out windows going through there. Um, Item B there, courthouse facility grant award. And I, as I started talking, uh, I just paused because I, I saw the copy of the letter that you uh, texted to me. I don't know that I've seen the actual document that has been, uh, was, was mailed to our office. But uh, in, in any event, we've seen the, the document that we were approved for the 75% uh, court facility improvement grant award to create a um, um, jury. jury yeah a jury room uh, on a jury deliberation room on the third floor and, I think everyone's and, familiar with this project right I think so it was it was first talked about probably two years ago uh, at, at first it was a number of different options and judge Rasick made a recommendation and then that wasn't um, approved by the uh, by the committee, uh, and then uh, uh, working with uh, with Judge Bailey uh, towards the end of last year was uh, take a look at the um, in, 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 essentially the options we started with two years ago, and and uh, um, came to the same conclusion and and put that uh, that recommendation forward. Gene prepared the. Um, uh, got the, the cost estimates, and, and so we um, have a, a motion to for the, the committee to consider of accepting the award um, for 54134 That That represents 75% of the uh, estimated project cost. There would be a remaining uh, amount, uh, 18000-ish, for the uh, um, uh, the the twenty five per remaining twenty five percent, the county would have to uh, cover as part of that. Uh, I if I sound a little uh, hesitant in my, my wording on the uh, uh, suggested motion, I did get this directly from Sarah. So I, I think we're we're good with this uh, this recommendation, but it, this allows us to to move forward with that. Um, 
um, that jury deliberation room on third floor. And yes. it's, a, it's a conversion of a what I think is currently a um, remote courtroom meets a couple of different needs right now. It's, um, a very, it's a small courtroom upstairs that has a conference room connected to it. Yeah, yeah that area. I think the idea was that they were going to leave the bench in there so it can function as a courtroom because you guys need it to function that way. So then, I haven't looked at the final plans for but that at one point that was in the plans and I'm just not sitting here. I don't remember what the final version. Do we have a copy of that? I don't remember what the we final were, version was. We were actually going to buy uh, furniture that would pick out the benches that are in there for people to sit on. Um, and uh, the uh, right wall. I think that the actual judge's bench, bench stays. stays. And then we would actually buy the furniture that would create uh, you could <coughs> or something like this or whatever. It's like on second floor if you guys and uh, make a table set up that jurors could sit around. And then, um, <clears throat> and then you would take that apart. You could then put it back to where you could have a smaller court proceedings smaller or Zoom court, court proceedings, yeah. those types of things, so that it's multifunctional. Yeah. And um, thank you for all your work on that. It's really appreciated. So, anyone who helped with that? Yeah, that was a. Um, that, that's been an interesting process because we thought we had a really good uh, application in two years ago, and uh, the the feedback was, well, yeah, you're approved if another county doesn't use their grant money, and and then you know being sort of second in line, then we resubmitted it last year and got turned down, and so now third time's the charm. So it's good to good to have that. Um, have that in there. So, uh, again, that need need action on there, but um, I guess my sort of wrap-up thought would be just looking back at this building fund uh, cash flow sheet that there's um, a number of projects in there, and, uh, you know, th these are these are budgeted amounts right now that, that we will, in short order, start to have hard dollars start to to drop into, but for now we're working with, with a number of estimates, and uh, you see it's a it's a fairly healthy fund, but we uh, um, we use a lot. We drop uh, drop uh, relatively low by the end of 2025, <coughs> and um, uh, before we uh, start start building again. And um, would also just note for the uh, for the commissioners here that um, you know that you've got. Five million plugged in for both Triple R D C and twenty three and twenty four, um, and we don't know. You know, that we're, we're we're also going to be going out for bids before too long on that Triple uh, uh, R D C building, uh, and so there's you know the, that's not those costs are not fully locked down uh, locked down either. So there's there's still uh, a considerable amount of um, uh, uh, of unknowns here. And, and that's, again, plays back to the, uh, the frequency that this committee wants to continue to meet moving forward. Um, but without question, uh, Taylor, I, I think we've got a, we've got a motion that we would be looking to, looking to consider. Yep, that's the intent of this board is to make recommendations to our friends in the commission and allocate resources accordingly. And as Mr. Wilson alluded to, we're going to have quite a number of choices coming up in the near future. From my perspective, the only no matter what's on this entire list are the jail, the dispatch center, everything else are wants. And if everything doesn't work out the way I'm hoping, yes, we're gonna spend some money on architectural fees on projects that we're not gonna build. That's okay, because we need to be informed so that future commissions will have a better understanding of where the budget stand. And if everything comes in as aggressively as I am optimistically hopeful of, We'll have resources and we can expend them accordingly. Uh, so yeah, uh, we'd look for a motion from this committee to make a recommendation <laughs> to our friends on the commission. I'd make a motion to accept the court facilities improvement grant award in the amount of 54,134 and authorize an expenditure and budget adjustment of 54,134 
from the account listed and a revenue adjustment of 40600 to the account listed. Is there a second, please? Second. Move and second. Any discussion on the motion? Any discussion? Any discussion? If not, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Peterson? Yes. Ms. Steele? I, can, can I vote in lieu of? Yes, she's been, if you, she's been given your proxy to you, yes. Yes. Ms. Madriga? Yes. Commissioner Capitan? Yes. Sheriff Drawner? Yes. And Mr. Wilson? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Anything else for the current building updates? I think that should be it. Thank you um, very much for taking care of the board. Oh, yeah. No, uh, nothing, nothing on the, the specific project update. The next uh, thing would be the, uh, um, the discussion of upcoming meeting dates, frequency. Yeah, so uh, for, it's from my perspective, <clears throat> this is what we're talking about, it's just me. I think we should meet monthly. I think we've got so much going on, uh, and I know all of us in this room are painfully busy on some days, but uh, I think it's imperative that we be responsive, and I think as things are progressing, <coughs> we need to progress with them, and with that means more frequency. Uh, and my easy answer is once a month, call it the first meeting, uh, we should have a better grasp on dang near everything by March, our March 1st our March X meeting, yeah. let me pull it up here. Regardless of what the date is, it's going to be what it's going to be, 6th. Um, I, I think we'll be in better shape then. I'll actually be out of town for that meeting, but I'll be available via Zoom, an insurance reserve board meeting. But uh, I think we should meet once a month. Any discussion on that? Taylor, I'm just... Uh flipping through my calendar and it looks like that two o'clock on the first meeting of the month um, is a spot that we can kind of slide into nicely. Are you, are you seeing the same thing? Yeah. Yeah, I think um, we don't. Yes. Yeah. Day of the week. Is that, is that Monday. Every yep. Monday, the first Monday of the month. Yep. The first, yeah. Yep. The Plus one, or minus. The one exception to that would be is if there's a holiday that falls on that Monday, it would uh, fall back to Tuesday. Again, any objections to that? I would concur with the recommendation that I, I think things are gonna, gonna move fast enough that um, we will need to, to bring uh, bring updates to, the, to, to this committee. Yep. That is really the intent of the committee and, and we haven't had meetings of this frequency in the past, but we also haven't had um, number of projects, multiple projects in play at the same time. So that I can report back to the court, uh, when will that recommendation be brought up to the full commission for the grant? In about 38 minutes. Okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so Gene, you've made you don't need a motion on, on that. That's just an agreement, right? Uh, we'll take care of it upstairs here. Okay. So I won't be able to be here on the April one, but it looks like I'm good. I was just going to say, the April one, it looks like we already tentatively scheduled the flood sales tax for two. So maybe we would just have we to do it at on. noon that day. Or, that's what I'm saying. It just needs to be somewhere in that plane. But the rest of them look like that. But the 2 o'clock time frame works, I think. Sounds good. Okay, any other discussion on meetings? Other business? I have some other business. We're looking at, so our Chief Justice is looking at Two more judges upstairs. My gut reaction is we're going to wind up with one. And I think we've got a home for the one, uh, as well as team members to support the one. With more judges comes more trials. With more trials means maybe more courtrooms. Which means uh, more staff. I'm not worried about staff, especially <laughs> law enforcement. You guys are bri just brimming with, with, with people to set... Uh, security for this courthouse. Um, I think it's time to start discussing the next phase of what this building is going to be. Uh, from my perspective, I'd like to work with Judge Webb, who helped get this building established, uh, along with Commissioner Scott Wagner, and to figure out what we can do. We've actually, Mr. Wilson, I, and Judge Webb walked through the space. I think I've got a solution for another courtroom. Uh, someday, we'll have to put an addition on this building. 
much like we're doing with our jail. It's inevitable. That day is not now, that day is not for 10 years, but uh, within our proposal for the law enforcement center, so you know you can share, I think they may be know upstairs. Uh, we're looking at three separate potential virtual sites out at the jail, our, our multi-purpose rooms. Okay. May not come to fruition right away, but based on the needs of the courts, there's gonna be spaces that are purpose for those. Just the one. Well, I mean, really, you have yeah, one and a quarter, one. that little one. We can use our full time. <coughs> we have to do the actual yeah. and stuff going on. So, really right now. so, the virtual stuff, I think we've got a home for in the future that'll get us for many, many years. But I think we do need something in the courthouse. So, Mr. Wilson. Um, I would just say that, uh, you know, with, uh, with, with Judge Bailey, coming on the building committee and, and uh, a couple of the conversations that really focused on the um, court improvement grant application that we prepared um, uh, leading up to the end of the year. Uh, I shared a, a number of conversations with, with her as the building committee uh, uh, representative from the, uh, uh, from the courts. And, and the last I heard there was that um, from, from Judge Bailey was that um, that Judge McCullough from the courts was going to sort of take the lead and would be in touch with me after the uh, after the session is over. Now, where who we work with there, how yeah. we work with the, that, just just so we have every, everybody on in in the lanes and and organized as we uh, as we want. Just want to, want to make sure we're all on the same page in in who's got what lines of communication moving forward. That's fine. Uh, I do think, though, that we need to start thinking about what's next for our courts. Who was it you, you said you wanted to work with? Judge Webb. And who else? Uh, that's my preference, period. No, you said someone. You said another person. Scott Wagner. Scott Wagner. Well, that's, no, he, the two people that hope, helped drive this building were Webb and Wagner. And so, um, and you've already visited with Webb, and he would like to be on this project? Correct. Um, so I will just relay that back. Wonderful. And I think the main message to convey is we need to start thinking this is for this committee as well as our friends upstairs. I, I do think we're going to get a judge. I don't think we're going to get two. <clears throat> and I don't know if they have a home for that person right now. So, so far, they've not chopped off any judges from the request. I'm sure you are watching that yeah. as well. Um, and I think if some of the other judges get their judgeships, it, it would not make sense not to give us two. But I, I don't... Okay. I, our numbers really support too. Um, well, that that I know. Like I, you said, who knows? Um, we have it talked a little bit about running. This is all just preliminary. You know, we might need to start running more arraignment sessions. You know, so we're going into the evening hours and those kind of things. But that's going to be a broader discussion, and it's going to take multiple meetings and yeah. coordinating. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know if it if. Um, we don't right now we don't have enough secure courtrooms but to do that and you know that yep. and i'm not speaking on behalf of anybody or trying to say here's the court's position those are just kind of some things that i'm sure we'll have further discussions on down the road yeah okay and that's the main the main conveyance i think from this 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 is just one person conveyance from this board is we need to find a home for the judge or two mm -hmm. as well as the team the team members are going to support them because right now that's not in our program anywhere i don't think budgetarily architecturally anything we've been scheming but nothing for real i i would uh, i would look to mr gartner there because i think you had at least a concept of where one additional chambers could be located am i yeah out of turn there or are you well, the second floor we do have two offices down there and for a temporary fix i mean you could put the judges down there their staff would be we, we could Remote. find somewhere um, we have library space we can maybe work with if we need to. I, I mean, I think it's, there's lots of options. And if a temporary solution needs to be made, I think we could make it work. Um, that's my opinion. Yep. Solely, I'm not speaking on behalf of anyone. Uh, but I, I, do, I do think that we could temporarily make a fix. Do you agree, Gene? Yeah. 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 Judge Steele said the position of the court <laughs> says. Yep. Yes. Said we yes. Are having ten <laughs> Everything is fine the way it is. Don't touch a thing. And I certainly agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but again, I, th I think it's, this is, we need to start, I'm optimistic that we're going to get something, whether it's one or two, and we need to plan accordingly for that because I don't think that we've planned accordingly. We, not, we should not have, but I think it's time to start having that dialogue of what's next and where do we put them. And what does that mean? Well, I don't know that I know, but I, I do think though that it's, arguably we've got three months to figure it out, right? So we'll know within three months who's going to be here and when they're going to arrive. I I would I would tell you that just hall, hallway conversations there were there was a critical mass of of some awareness reached um, two or three months ago because uh, that I, I think you're you know we we started having conversations at that point I was having hearing some other conversations at that so I, I think the uh, the the more formal way of moving this forward is is um, Critically needed, so we yep. so we do this in a uh, in a methodical and planned manner. And it's going to take. And I I don't know whether it's FOSS, but it's probably FOSS because they did this building. They need time to spool up and start their engines kicking too. So it'll take them a month or six weeks. To, let's pretend we had a. Let's say we knew it's going to be one judge. Uh, it's going to take them six weeks to start because everyone's busy right now. Everyone else is just overwhelmed right now with work. So to get into their queue. They also have to appoint a judge, so after they say yep. we get one, so that'll take a little bit of time. That always takes time. So we, yes, they might give us one, but then we have to get somebody to be appointed to the position. So we'd have a little bit of time there. Ideally, we'd have a house for them to move into that's all prepped and ready. But again, that, this is important dialogue, I think, because, again, I think we're going to get one. We may get two. That would be awesome. But if we don't start this... Yeah. On a more formal basis, I think that we're going to get to April. And they're going to say you have two judges. Support them accordingly. Yeah. Oh. Offices downstairs have furniture in them yeah. already. They just don't have any like computers or anything. But I think that's the, our end, right? The yes. support you don't provide any of that. Um, and so if there's just one, I think both those offices at least have pretty new furniture in them. Oh, is there really? Okay. It's okay. nice. Yeah. It, there it, there used to be judges' chambers until um, the new part was in. Or that doesn't make sense. It, it, we used to use them for judges' chambers. I'm not sure when that switched. On the second floor? Um, there were a couple of judges that were down there for a little while. Judge Race moved down there for a little bit when he was getting ready to retire. It did. It was McCullough down there while his office was being fixed? Yeah, maybe something. Fixed, like that, maybe. But, yeah. but so, I mean, I, I do think that, it, <clears> like, just in a pinch, we. And maybe even more of a permanent for a while, they can be down there. Um, and but I thank you for thinking ahead. <laughs> well, I think again, and that would be a dream if the answers are just that simple, where we can update some paint and color schemes and carpet, and we're done. Yeah. Okay. Well, that would be a dream. It's all Well, let's start the dialogue, right? Yeah, please. Yeah. That's my main yeah. message here. Uh, other than that, other business, anything else from the team, Mr. Wilson? Nothing else. Anything else, team? If not, for a motion to adjourn? Make a motion. Second? Aye. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Let's both same sign. We stand adjourned. Thank you so much, everyone. Look forward to more frequent meetings in an effort to uh, accomplish our mission more effectively. Thanks. <laughs>